Hi, this is Eddie Muller. Welcome back to TCM's Friday Night Neo Noir series, where I am joined by my colleague Ben Mankiewicz here on the Noir Alley set. Uh, but instead of classic noir, we are talking all about neo noir. So thanks, uh, thanks for having me. And I think uh, as our, our first movie of the night, which is Blood Simple from the Cone Brothers, every time we kick this off on Friday night, you probably ought to tell people what we mean by neo noir. <laughs> well, we're trying to figure it out right, ourselves, sure. of course. Uh, by the way, the answer tonight uh, it might be different than the answer. Tonight's answer is, <laughs> is yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, well, it's a it's a demarcation used to separate it from the classic noir era which nobody can settle on when that was either. Right. So who knows when neo-noir starts, but uh, you know, when the films switched to color, they had to have some way of distinguishing them from the older films. But you know, the production code has kind of diminished, if not fallen apart completely. I think in tonight's movies, it's fallen apart completely. Yes. Um, but you know, they just use it to make sure people are not confusing it with the classic era of Hollywood. I think the production code hampered storytelling the most in its demand that evil be punished, right? Um, these movies are wonderfully free of that. Not in all of them, and that is uh, uh, refreshing. It's realistic. We, I, I got news for you if you, you pay any attention to, you know, the newspaper over the last, I don't know, <laughs> 50 years. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> yes. sometimes the bad guys get away the with it. The bad guys win on occasion. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a really important point, I think. And, and I've always said that the original film noir era is where American movies started to lose their innocence. Yeah. And neo-noir, it's gone. Well, that's that innocence is gone in these movies. To, to me, uh, as a noir viewer and not a noir expert like you are, the, my favorite part about noir is given the restrictions that evil is going to get punished in general in the movie, that they still manage to sort of... Uh, to, to chip away at the idyllic view of, of America and humanity. The thing that's really interesting about the movie we're showing, Blood Simple, is I've, I've mentioned that some of the films we're showing in this series are tributes to older films. Uh, some of them subvert the older films. The Coen brothers who made Blood Simple are movie fans. Yeah. I mean, there is no two ways about it, and that is abundantly clear in their first film. And very fitting uh, that they chose to make a noir uh, as their first movie. Be because, and it, it's not just them. It's a lot of first-time yeah. filmmakers. It's because you don't need a lot of money. The plots are always complex and carry the day, but they take place in a limited space. They take place in bars and hotels. They're shadowy, so you don't need a lot of production value. You never see a cast of thousands in noir. So these guys could actually afford to make one of these movies as their first film. And they made a great one and enhanced enormously by a couple of actors who turned out to be whatever you want to call the ranking at the top. <laughs> uh, Francis McDormand and M. Emmett Walsh are on that list. Yes, absolutely. And this was, uh, I don't know if it was Francis McDormand's first movie, uh, but... You know, it was interesting that they cast her in this film. And to me, that's kind of a, a one of the ways in which they are honoring the the form but subverting it at the same time. Because the people in this movie are not people that you would associate with film noir. No. Right? They're like ordinary people. Right? Very, yeah. And uh, doing extraordinary things, which in some respects is the definition of noir. It's ordinary people learning what they're capable of. And the thing about this story that's so amusing, because this is a Coen Brothers specialty, is it's very funny. Yep. I, I mean, there's a black humor to it, because when ordinary people realize what they're capable of, it doesn't mean they do it well. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. mean they really know what the hell they're getting into. Oh, my God. As, uh, as far as the, the crime element of this, I mean, it, just from watching movies and having a brother on Dateline NBC, I mean, you just cry out, this is insane. You're going to get caught. Have you not thought this through at all? But that is part of what makes it so uh, authentic. Literally everyone involved in this film was doing this for the first time. M most people involved had never been on a film set before. I don't think that the cinematographer, Barry Sonnenfeld, had shot a movie before. And he went on to not only be a great cinematographer, but a director in his own right. Directed Get Shorty and other things. Uh, so, it, yeah. 
this is what you can accomplish when you put your mind to it and you have a lot of chutzpah and a lot of gall like these guys had and a lot of talent. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to get to the part where you got to get to the part where they have talent. Where they know uh, what they're doing. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of a touchstone in, in the later era of neo-noir because this is where they're commenting on all the other movies that have already been made and yeah. doing it their way. So uh, with that... Here is, uh, in one of her earliest roles, three-time Academy Award winner, Frances McDormand and M. Emmett Walsh yes. in Blood Simple. 